I'll draw reaction. Are we going? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi class. So now I'm going to give a little talk about the aldol reaction. Um, it's kind of it's it's related to the Wittig reaction. As I and then as I always tell students, this is my favorite reaction for a lot of reasons. Um, so what we're going to make is is this um, species. This is the um, this is tetra phenyl cyclo pentadienone. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, when you have this kind of structure, when and this is called a alpha beta unsaturated. Ketone. Okay, when you have this kind of compound, the reaction that you would normally carry out is an aldol. Okay, so this is, I, I may have talked about this a little bit before, that's why I stopped for a minute there, but it bears repeating in this context. So this is alpha, beta, okay, unsaturated, ketone. So the position next to the carbonyl is called the alpha position. This is called the beta position. So it's alpha, beta, unsaturated, double bond, ketone. But notice it's doubly so, all right? This kind of um, structure usually suggests the use of an aldol. Also, if you see this kind of structure, I'm being too specific here. So being more general, if you have this or if you have this, okay, either of these would suggest the use of the aldol, and this is really the precursor to this. Um, so let's look at this retrosynthetically. So again, what does it mean when I do a retrosynthesis? It means that I'm looking at a reaction backwards. Okay, so what would be the precursor to this? The precursor to this would be this. I'm kind of doubling up on my steps here because everything here happens twice. Now remember, those are benzenes. So we get, this is where all your benzenes are coming from for that hexaphenyl benzene that we're trying to make. So the precursor to this would be this. All right, this is the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. This is the beta, this is called a beta hydroxy ketone. And I still maintain that half of ke organic chemistry is knowing the language. Like you have to know the language. When you don't know the language, you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what's the precursor to this? The precursor to this would be in an aldol reaction. And again, I'm saying when, when this kind of structure exists, it suggests the use of an aldol. People always say, why is that your favorite reaction? Um, it's a, what my favorite reaction because, first of all, it's, it's kind of prevalent in nature. And a lot of compounds, a lot of natural products have this kind of structure in it, particularly this one. I've seen it many times. The aldol actually occurs in nature. That's one reason I really like it. Um, I also like it because... It is, um, humans have made it stereoselective, so you, you know that's my big thing. So you can actually do this reaction and only make one enantiomer. So it's very important in um, organic synthesis um, and in nature. So we can really mimic nature with this reaction, and that's one of the reasons I really love it. Um, you can do some really interesting reactions to make it. But the aldol is a great reaction, and it can be, there's many, many versions of the aldol. So look at this. I'm saying that from this, I can make this, if I can make this. Okay, how do I make this? I use, oh, you should, you should be excited. This is what you made. This is benzyl. So this is that nice yellow compound you made. I use benzyl with this compound, which is diphenylpropanone, 1,3-diphenylpropanone. 
So if I take those reagents and I put them in base, I, I'll get that, and that, that'll just spontaneously form this. And what's wonderful about this compound is it's purple. And from class, right, this one was yellow. This one also has a little bit of tint to it. I don't think it's supposed to have tint, but it has a little tint in the bottle. And you might say to yourself, oh, why would I have color in this? So again, think about what you learned in lecture about conjugation and color. This compound absorbs in the visible range. In fact, one of its wavelengths, I think its wavelength is 505 nanometers, which is in the visible range of the um, electromagnetic spectrum. Um, so, how do you do this? Let's look at the mechanism. Experimentally, this one's very easy to do. Um, so, you take this compound. Let's write it out with its benzene rings. just put these together in a flask so this will be around this will be hanging around but the important thing is so what what will happen is essentially is you'll have a large test tube you'll have a big test tube so you're going to do this one a little differently you put these two reagents in the test tube in ethanol so the solvent's going to be ethanol in another smaller test tube you put some KOH one pellet of KOH and some more ethanol and the, and you heat them up in a steam bath until the KOH they're all dissolved when they're all dissolved, you, you take the little test tube of KOH and you pour it into the test tube that has these two reagents in, and the reaction just occurs. It's a very simple, and you do it on a steam bath for like 15 minutes. It's very easy. And as my recollection mm -hmm. is you use like 0.8 of this and 0.8 of that. That's my recall. My recommendation is to do it on the scale written, but do the larger scale pr procedure, not the microwave procedure. So you take these and you take ethanol, and you take um, KOH. All right, so what happens? Well, the KOH is not the strongest base in the world, but it's actually strong enough to pull this kind of proton off. It's kind of like the Vitic. It has, th these two reactions have some things in common. Um, the, K the hydroxide can pull this off. Why? You want to think about why. If this H comes off, you form a carbanion that has resonance stabilization from the carbonyl and from the benzene ring. So this is a fairly acidic proton. So this will come off maybe not 100%, but sufficiently to do this reaction. Okay? Um, so, but it's not a 100%, it's not a 100% abstraction of the hydrogen, but it's pretty sufficient. So what happens is some of these molecules lose their H, or a lot of them do, and you get an anion. They don't both come off simultaneously, in my opinion. All right. I don't believe they do. And you get this anion, and it's kind of like the last case. You guys, I want you to sit down and draw the resonance forms. The charge is distributed through the benzene ring up onto that up. But the chemistry I'm going to do is here. Okay. What you're making is what's called an enolate. Right. The most important resonance form is this one with the O minus up here, and hopefully you're learning about this in class. This gave you like another week to kind of catch up, but there's also distribution out onto the benzene ring. Why would I not want to write both charges? Because um, it's this, the first one has a much lower pK than the second one. It's really hard to generate two negative charges in the same structure. Think of sulfuric acid. The first proton has a much more favorable pKa, has a much lower pKa than the second hydrogen that, that comes off sulfuric acid. So this one's going to come off easier, or one of the two is easier than the other. Um, and so then what happens, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to start going to these groups because they're, what's that? It's okay. Oh, I said someone was coming in. Okay. So the, um, ha this comes off. I'm on the other side, but it doesn't matter which side I'm on. So I have the anion. Okay, what is it going to do? Well, you have your beautiful benzyl molecule. And I'm going to draw below this because it's a lot easier to understand if I, I draw this below. Benzyl is like a great molecule for this to attack. So this comes in, attacks the carbonyl, and opens that up, right? And that should look really familiar to you. And you say to yourself, well, it's 
and I could have said this on the last one, will it flip or will it stick? It's going to stick, just like the last case. The only thing is you don't have that phosphorus for the oxygen to bite into. So it'll just open up. This is very much like a Grignard. You know, you should be learning those patterns in the way carbonyls, uh, carbanions react. So what is the result of that? The result of that, it's so much easier for me to draw these phenyls this way. So exciting. We just made another carbon bond, right? Look at this. We're learning all the carbon-carbon bond forming reactions in the spring. They're the most important reactions, really, in a lot of ways. So, so you get that. Then what happens? This just gets a proton from the, the medium. It's probably most likely that it would pull a hydrogen off the ethanol solvent, but it could pull it off of water because we just made a water molecule. So now what do we have? I'm going to keep this a little smaller. Can you see those smaller structures? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to keep drawing these because they are so much easier to draw. So we just made the carbon-carbon bond. Now this is an OH. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to take care of the OH in a minute. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. 